Hello, I'm so glad to see you again. So where we left off was thinking about what, um, what James might have seen when he crawled up to that little hole and went inside. So let's find out. We're on chapter 10. It was quite a large hole, the sort of thing an animal about the size of a fox would have made. James knelt down in front of it and poked his head and his shoulders inside. He kept on crawling. This isn't just a hole, he thought excitedly. It's a tunnel. Did any of you think that there was going to be a tunnel inside? The tunnel was damp and murky, and all around him there was a curious, bittersweet smell of fresh peach. That actually sounds delicious. The floor was soggy under his knees. The walls were wet and sticky, and peach juice was dripping from the ceiling. James opened his mouth and caught some of it on his tongue. It tasted delicious. He was crawling uphill now, as though the tunnel were leading straight toward the very center of the gigantic fruit. Every few seconds, he paused and took a bite out of the wall. The peach flesh was, flesh was sweet and juicy and marvelously refreshing, especially since he hadn't eaten anything all day. Remember when Aunt Spiker and Aunt Sponge just thrust him out into the garden and locked the door behind him, even though he was begging for a little bit to eat? They were so bad. He crawled on for several more yards, and then suddenly, bang! The top of his head bumped into something extremely hard, blocking his way. Do you know what it is? I think you will have guessed. He glanced up. At, uh, he glanced up. In front of him was a solid wall that at first seemed as though it were made of wood. He touched it with his fingers. It certainly felt like wood, except that it was very jagged and full of deep grooves. Good heavens, he said, I know what this is. I've come to the stone in the middle of the peach. Another way that you can talk about the stone is to call it a seed, right? Then he noticed that there was a small door cut into the face of the peach stone, also called a seed. He gave it a push. It swung open. He crawled through it. and Before he had time to glance up and see where he was, he heard a voice saying, look who's here. And another one saying, we've been waiting for you. What a nice way to be met. So there he is at the door of the seed of the peach. James stopped and stared at his speakers, his face white with horror. That doesn't sound good. He started to stand up, but his knees were shaking so much he had to sit down again on the floor. He glanced behind him, thinking he could bolt back into the tunnel the way he had come, but the doorway had disappeared. There was now only a solid brown wall behind him. Let's find out what he saw. Chapter 11. James's large, frightened eyes traveled slowly across the room. The creature, some sitting on chairs, others reclining on sofas. Reclining is a synonym for laying back on the sofa. We're all watching him intently. Creatures, or were they insects? An insect is usually something rather small, is it not? A grasshopper, for example, is an insect. So what would you call it if you saw a grasshopper as large as a dog? As large as a large dog. You could hardly call that an insect, could you? There was an old green grasshopper as large as a large dog sitting on a stool directly across the room from James now. And next to the old green grasshopper, there was an enormous spider. And next to the spider, there was a giant ladybug with nine bl black spots on her scarlet shell. Each of these was squatting upon a magnificent chair. On a sofa nearby, reclining comfortably in a curled-up position, there was a centipede and an earthworm. On the floor, over in the far corner, there was something thick and white that looked as if it might be a silkworm. But it was sleeping soundly, and nobody was paying any attention to it. So let's take a look at the way that Quentin Blake drew these insects and see if you can tell which insect is which. Okay. Do we think that's the earthworm and the centipede? Look at all the shoes! And the earthworm, I wonder why he's wearing those sunglasses. Then we have, goodness gracious, then we have, oh, I think I can tell which one is the spider because a spider has eight legs. Yes. 
It's, oh goodness, it's that one right there. <laughs> and I believe this might be the grasshopper. Do you think this one is the ladybug? It's hard to tell since she's sitting with her tummy showing. We can't see her red shell and her black spots, but I think it's ladybug. They all look happy to see him. Each one of these creatures was at least as big as James himself, and in the strange greenish light that shone down from somewhere on the ceiling, they were absolutely terrifying to behold. I'm hungry, the spider announced, suddenly staring hard at James. How would that make you feel if a giant spider said, I'm hungry? I'd be afraid I'd be her next meal. I'm famished, the old green grasshopper said. So am I, the ladybug cried. The centipede sat up a little straighter on the sofa. Everyone's famished. We need food. What do you think James is thinking they want to eat? Do you think he's thinking they want to eat him? The centipede, oh, four pairs of round black glassy eyes were all fixed upon James. The centipede made a wriggling movement with his body as though he were about to glide off the sofa, but he didn't. Then there was a long pause and a long silence. The spider, who happened to be a female spider, opened her mouth and ran a long black tongue delicately over her lips. Ah, aren't you hungry? <laughs> she asked suddenly, leaning forward and addressing herself to James. Poor James was backed up against a wall, far wall, shivering with fright and much too terrified to answer. What's the matter with you? The old green grasshopper asked. You look positively ill. He looks as though he's going to faint any second, said the centipede. Oh my goodness, the poor thing, said the ladybug. I do believe he thinks it's him we are wanting to eat. I was thinking that too. There was a roar of laughter from all sides. Oh dear, oh dear, they said. What an awful thought. You mustn't be frightened, the ladybug said kindly. We wouldn't dream of hurting you. You are one of us now. Didn't you know that? You're one of the crew. We're all in the same boat. We've been waiting for you all day long, the old green grasshopper said. We thought you were never going to turn up. I'm glad you made it. So cheer up, my boy, cheer up, the centipede said. And meanwhile, I wish you'd come over here and give me a hand with these boots. It takes me hours to get them all off by myself. Now, why would a centipede ha have to spend a lot of time taking off his boots? Because he has a lot of what? You guessed it, a lot of legs. Chapter 12. James decided that this was most certainly not a time to be disagreeable, so he crossed the room to where the centipede was sitting and he knelt down beside him. Thank you so much, the centipede said. You are very kind. You have a lot of boots, James murmured. And I have a lot of legs, the centipede answered proudly. And a lot of feet, 100 to be exact. There he goes again, the earthworm cried, speaking for the first time. He simply cannot te stop telling lies about his legs. He doesn't have anything like 100 of them. He's only got 42. The trouble is that most people don't bother to count them. They just take his word for it. And anyway, there's nothing marvelous, you know, Centipede, about having a lot of legs. So I looked this up on the computer to see how many legs does a centipede really have. And a centipede can have anywhere from 15 pairs of legs. That would be 15 plus 15. Do the math. Or 177 pairs of legs. A pair means two. So 177 plus 177. I wonder who tomorrow might be able to tell me the answer to either of those problems. Anyway, that's how many a centipede really has. So it could be only 42. Poor fellow, the centipede said, whispering in James's ear. He's blind. He can't see how splendid I look. That's true that earthworms can't see. <laughs> in my opinion, the earthworm said, the really marvelous thing is to have no legs at all and to be able to walk just the same. You call that walking, cried the centipede? You're a slitherer. That's all you are. You just slither along. Slither, 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 slither. I glide, said the earthworm primly. You are a slimy beast, answered the centipede. 
I am not a slimy beast, the earthworm said. I'm a useful and much loved creature. Ask any gardener you like. And as for you, I am a pest, the centipede announced, grinning broadly and looking around the room for approval. He likes being a pest. He is so proud of that, the ladybug said, smiling at James. Though for the life of me, I can't imagine why. I am the only pest in this room, cried the centipede, still grinning away unless you count old green grasshopper over there. But he is long past being a pest now. He is too old to be a pest anymore. The old green grasshopper turned his huge black eyes upon the centipede and gave him a withering look like this. Young fellow, he said, speaking in a deep, slow, scornful voice, I have never been a pest in my life. I am a musician. Here, here, said Ladybug. James, the centipede said. Your name is James, isn't it? Yes. Well, James, have you ever in your life ever seen such a marvelous, colossal centipede as I? I certainly haven't, James answered. How on earth did you get to be like that? Very peculiar, the centipede said. Very, very peculiar indeed. Let me tell you what was happening. You know how centipede became this way, don't you? Now here he is talking to James, and James is helping him off with his boots. Not 100 boots. <laughs> 42. I was messing around by the garden under the old peach tree and suddenly a funny little green thing came wriggling past my nose. Bright green it was and extraordinarily beautiful and it looked like some kind of tiny stone or crystal. Oh, but I know what that was, cried James. It happened to me too, said Ladybug. And me, Miss Spider said. Suddenly there were little green things everywhere. The soil was full of them. I actually swallowed one, the earthworm declared proudly. So did I, said the ladybug. I swallowed three, the centipede cried, but who's telling the story anyway? Don't interrupt. It's too late to tell stories now, the old green grasshopper announced. It's time to go to sleep. I refuse to sleep in my boots, the centipede cried. How many more are there to come off, James? I think I've done 20 so far, James told him. That leaves 80 left to do. <laughs> What is 20 plus 80? Think about it. two tens plus eight tens. That's a hundred. But Earthworm has told us that Centipede only wishes he had 100 legs, that he actually has how many? 42. So if James has already untied and taken off 20 boots, how many more boots does he need to remove? 20 plus how many more would make 42? 20, 30, 40, 22, you're right. 22, not 80, shrieked the earthworm. He's lying again. The centipede roared with laughter. Stop pulling the earthworm's leg, the ladybug said. That sent centipede into hysterics. Pulling his leg, he cried, wriggling with glee and pointing at the earthworm. Which leg am I pulling? You tell me that. Of course, earthworms don't have legs. James decided that he rather liked the centipede. He was obviously a rascal, but what a change it was to hear someone laughing every once in a while. He had never heard Aunt Sponge or Aunt Spiker laughing aloud in all the time that he had been with them. We really must get some sleep, the old green grasshopper said. We've got a tough day ahead of us tomorrow, so would you be kind enough, Miss Spider, to make the beds? How do you think Miss Spider will make the beds? I would love to know. Can you please draw me an illustration? or right, or both if you want to go above and beyond, showing Spider and the beds she's created for everyone. I bet she's a wonderful, a wonderful, I don't know if you would call it seamstress if you're making a bed. <laughs> if you're making clothes, you would call it that. I'll bet she's wonderful at sewing. So I miss you and I, I think of you every day and I'll see you on YouTube tomorrow. Bye.